Hi everybody, okay, welcome back. Today we're looking at Jeremy Duff's Elements of New Testament Greek, section 3.5, the name Iesus, the name of our Lord, and this is a very simple section, uh, just to highlight that there are a, a couple of quirks about the grammatical form of the name Iesus, and it's also an opportunity just to think about a couple of things which will help you in the future when you're recognizing nouns and other words which are a little bit unfamiliar. Um, first, uh, just notice before we even look at the declension itself, I want to challenge you to pronounce the word correctly. Just check this one out and pause the video for a second and have a go at pronouncing it two or three times. Now, here's the mistake that people will often make. They'll pronounce it like this, Jesus, Jesus, which is strictly not correct. The reason is, of course, that this iota, capital iota, and the eta are not a diphthong. We're not looking at that as a single sound, but as two sounds. And therefore, strictly, the way to pronounce this in such a way that you're being consistent with the pronunciation system that we have developed and that I've been encouraging you to use to help you to keep each letter distinct in its sound is Iesus. Iesus. Notice, trying to highlight there are two syllables here. The I, the iota, with a smooth breathing, so an I, not here. I, er. Iesus. Iesus. Keep disciplining yourself to pronounce things in a slightly wooden, overemphasized way because it will help you no end when you come, especially to uh, uh, spelling Greek words, because if you remember the pronunci pronunciation, you have a cons consistent pronunciation system, obviously you can spell them uh, consistently very easily. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing to notice is really it's not that irregular. Um, Iesus, Iesun, Iesu, Iesu. And for comparison, a word like logos, logos, logon, logu, logo. Now, just again to highlight the similarities here, um, os, on, well, you've got us, os, un, on, u, u, and then obviously the final uh, dative singular. Uh, you're never going to have a plural form of Jesus, there are obvious reasons for that. Um, uh, the, the dative singular differs somewhat from the dative singular of a word like logos. But what I want to encourage you to do um, here, just for a moment, is to imagine that you didn't know that this is the nominative, accusative, genitive, and dative form. And particularly when you're looking at these, could you have guessed what form they're in? Could you have guessed that this is the nominative? Could you have guessed that this is the accusative? Or if I'd just given you these four words and not told you which case was which, would you have guessed that this is nominative and this is accusative? I hope you would have done, simply because of the resemblance of the endings. And this is a good principle to have in mind in the future. You will occasionally encounter words where the ending is slightly quirky, and it might be that it's a unique occurrence of a particular strange ending, or it might just be that it's a rare one, or it might just be one that you haven't learned yet. But quite often you can have a fair stab at what it means, simply by reflecting on its resemblance to other endings that you know. And so a nominative singular masculine word that ends in a sigma, or which ends in a new, well, come on guys, use your imagination. Probably it's gonna be uh, nominative accusative, even though there is this quirk. Now, in the future what's gonna happen, we're gonna learn other forms of nouns and other sets of nouns, and they'll have really rather different endings. But again, there'll be variations on those forms which you will be able to spot if you use a little bit of imagination and if you know the basic regular forms well. So I want to encourage you to have that in mind when you're looking at a new and unfamiliar word. One final point that Duff makes, again, it's a really helpful one. Very often, uh, names in Greek appear with a definite article, or just the article, there's no indefinite article in Greek, in front of them. And so that helps you to unequivocally distinguish between this, the genitive, and this, the dative form, because the genitive will have the genitive article, so it's of Jesus, and the dative, the dative article, to or for Jesus in front of it. So you'll be able to tell just from the article, even though the endings 
of the Genesis and Data form are the same. Okay, that's good for now. Uh, we'll move on in the next uh, video, slightly longer, slightly more complicated issue. Altos, a very important pronoun, but for now, keep working hard. 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, five or six days a week. Keep going it out for a year or two, and we will have you, re have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. Okay, God bless. Any comments and questions below, and see you next time.